Hello family, how y'all doing today? Or tonight actually. Um, this video is because I've been trying to find ways to uh, secure an excavator, a medium sized excavator to a step deck. I've been looking all over YouTube, trying to find it. Couldn't find nothing like that. I've asked uh, other drivers and the other drivers that I've asked, sorry about the light. The other drivers that I did ask, they haven't done it themselves either. So, like I said, I couldn't find no video, so I'm making this video because I could not find one. Hopefully this helps someone in the future on uh, if they get a small excavator like what I got, how to secure it down to a step deck. If they don't have um, the, the the chain tie downs in the, in the bed or anything like that, they just got spools and stake pockets. Uh, no D-rings. Well, I got sliding D-rings around with my sliding winch sliding winches and stuff but um what i did was all right so what i did was i took chains uh three eighths chains three eighths chains i took them and i secured them like this all right when i say i secured them like this i did direct tie downs uh direct tie downs according to fmcsa gives you half the working load limit a 3H chain is 6,600 pounds. And because I did a direct tie down, it, it the, the FMCSA breaks it down to 50%, which gives me 3,300 pounds right here. All right, so this is 30, this is 3,300 pounds. That's 3,300 pounds. And this is an indirect tie down. I mean, a direct tie down also, because it comes from the track. It comes from the track. Over to a sliding winch. All right, I mean, uh, slide D-ring. This slide D-ring working load limit is 5,000 pounds. However, I get, um, they don't, they haven't been looking at that um, like that. So they will still give me the 3,300 pounds because of the chain. All right, but it's 50%. Let's say that 50% is 2,500 pounds because that's uh, 5,000. All right, so 3,300. Let's say this 2,500. This is another 2,500. That's another 3,300. So 3,300 times four, and then 2,500 times four. So that's 5,000. That's 10,000 pounds. Those on the tracks that go across the tracks. This is 10,000. I'll fold them together. 10,000 pounds. All right. And then this would be three, six, nine, twelve, and then three, six, nine, twelve, twelve thousand plus another. So that would be 13,200 pounds plus another 10,000. So 13,200 plus another 10,000 give you 225. No, 22, 22, two. No, what I said, yeah, 13, two plus 10 is 23, two, right? So by FMCSA standards, I need to secure at least 50% of the load and 50% of this this uh, uh, excavator, this is excavator for all tests and purposes. The excavator weighs 4, uh, 40,000 pounds. I got more than 20,000 pounds secured with just my tracks. Now, because I have two attachments, the dozer blade and the boom and the stick, or the boom and stick, whichever way they go. I don't know how they call them. I don't know about, about all that. However, because I have two attachments, I also need to secure and the attachments down. So I got this this um, two-inch strap, three thousand three hundred thirty-three pounds working load limit. However, this is an indirect tie down, which means it goes from the trailer over or through the uh, cargo and back down to the other side of the trailer. So I get 100% of the working load limit of this strap. And the same thing for this strap, 100% of the working load limit because it goes from the trailer over back to the trailer. All right. Um, another thing is this is considered heavy equipment because it weighs 10,000 pounds, 10,001 pounds or more. And it's on tracks or wheels that makes it heavy machinery, right? or heavy equipment. So 
With that being said, heavy equipment requires you to put a chain on each corner. So you got four corners, the four chains. One, two, three, and four. Now those four chains also go with the uh, the 50% minimum securement. And with those, like I said, it's 3,300 pounds. So there's 13,200 pounds that I got. And now I need to continue going. And I need to add more chains until I get to at least 20,000 pounds, which is the reason why I added the other four chains. Which is the reason why I added the other four chains. This might be a dark video, y'all. I'm sorry about that, but you know, I was thinking about it. So I went on and uh, had to go ahead and make this video right quick. Now, how I did it is I took the hook, grabbed, hooked it onto the, uh, to the tracks, which is legal because none of my, the, the, the track itself, this, this metal piece, the track itself is not bent, it's not cracked, bent, or broken. And the bolts are not cracked, bent, broken, or loose. These are tight, this is a brand new machine. So since, I'm, since I hooked to this, which is legal by FM, from FMCSA, I went from here and pulled down to the stake pocket. And instead of coming down under the stake pocket, some people come down under and go back up, I came out and came out around it. You're looking from the top, you'll see I went down and came out around it and came back up. And then I used the chain, my, my, my winch, my ratchet binder, pulled it tight and put the slack to the other side of the trailer. And I did the same thing on the other side of the trailer, right? I did that back here because I have, I, if pulling here, I wouldn't have been able to make that pull. And then I had nothing back this way in order to in order to make that in order to hook up back here so i came across the pocket i did that on both sides all right now right here like i said i hooked up from on top of the uh track came down went down on my sliding d-ring went through my sliding d-ring came back up used my ratchet binder tighten it up through the slack i did the same thing right here did the same thing right here, down through the D-ring, back up to the track, using my binder. Now up front, I did the same thing I did in the back, however, I wrapped it around two spools. These two spools, the working, working load limit for two spools is six to 600 pounds. The working load limit for one, for this trailer, this trailer, the working load limit for one of these, one of the state pockets is uh, 5,000 and one spool is 5,000, but two spools is 6,600. All right, you'll see that on the data plate. But that's how I secured it down. Like I said, I come from the track, down, wrapped it around both spools, used my ratchet binder through the slack across and did the same thing on the opposite side. That's how I secured it down. Uh, there are other ways to secure it down. If you have the, um, some trailers have a chain that comes out of the floor, those are rated at depending on who, who manufactured it, anywhere from five to six to 600 pounds, 5,000 to six to 600 pounds, you can pull it to that. Um, there is, are even J hooks that fits in these grooves right here. All right, you got this groove, that groove, and that groove. You got J hooks that fit in those. Those J hooks are rated those at- Those J hooks are rated at, um, depending on which ones you get, I've seen them rated at anywhere between six and 7,000 pounds. Um, those are meant, there are many ways of doing it, but this is the way I did it because this is the way that was most convenient for me. Now, this excavator does have chain tie downs or tie down points that are, um, I don't know if y'all can see this. You got Hold tie down on. points right there. That's a tie down point. So the way it, that it's designed is it has one, one right there and it has another one over here and the same thing in the back, right? So that's four points you could tie down if you had the J-hooks I was talking about. Look up in here, you can pull to those J-hooks and make short pulls. Um, outside of that, there is a, a um, diagram on how you should secure this excavator down. That diagram is right here. 
Now, what this diagram shows is, this diagram shows the four tie downs that I showed you that are in there. And then it also says take one chain and throw it from here across the track, across the center of the uh, excavator, across the other track and back to the trailer and tie it down that way. It says do that on the front and on the back. Um, the cross chains in the middle, front and back, and then a, a chain across each track, front and back. However, I don't have the room to do that. And then this uh, attachment is there, so I don't want to damage the uh, these plates. I mean, they're pretty thick, but I don't want to damage the plates. Or uh, if I happen to damage the plates and get it tight enough, damage the uh, the hydraulics are part of them. So that's the way I did it. Uh, like I said, there are plenty of ways of doing it, but I couldn't find other ways of doing it, or especially on a step deck. So that's what I did. And uh, appreciate y'all for looking, watching the video, like, comment, subscribe, you know, um, share the videos and everything. And uh, yeah, if you got any questions, ask the questions, put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer every question. If I don't know the answer, I will let you know I do not know the answer and I will try to find the answer. But uh, like I said, appreciate y'all. Come again. God bless.